For this year's report, we've been uh, focusing on uh, female patients who die by suicide. Now, for years, there's been a great concern, great emphasis uh, on male suicide. Men have higher rates of suicide, and that's true of male patients as well. But this year, we've tried to look instead uh, at the details of female patient suicides. The numbers are substantial. Uh, over the lifetime of the report, that's a 10-year period, uh, we found around 6,000 female patients who died by suicide. Now, they have a higher rate of contact with services. Uh, around 39% of women who die are mental health patients. Uh, and they're in closer proximity. They're more likely to have seen the service in the previous week, the week before they die. We found, too, that the, the profile of risk is different for female patients. Some risk factors that are well known uh, are less common, like alcohol and drugs. And yet self-harm, which is one of the most important indicators of suicide risk, is more common as an antecedent. Therefore, by paying attention to self-harm services, we can have a disproportionate effect on the safety of, uh, of female patients. We're concerned, too, about what we think of as the comorbidity problem. Uh, women who not only have a mental health problem, but who have an additional problem, sometimes personality disorder, not a diagnosis that we like, but one that's often in use. Uh, they've also got a history of self-harm. Uh, they may also have an alcohol or drug problem, and sometimes these are young women. And that group of problems all occurring together uh, seems to be quite common in the people whose deaths we've studied. And the message to services is therefore that it needs to be able to accommodate, to be able to provide care for, to support this group of people with a, a range of problems, a multiplicity of risks that maybe conventional services find difficult. So that comorbidity issue has to become one of the main areas of expertise of our mental health services. We've also been looking in detail at people who carry out an act of non-fatal self-harm shortly before they take their own lives. Self-harm has been increasing uh, as an antecedent of suicide by people under mental health care. And it's very strongly linked to age and to sex, linked to young people and linked to females, so young women in particular. And we found that when people come to hospital with a, an act of self-harm, their risk is often underestimated, under-recognised. And we're saying to services that this is a very important indicator of subsequent suicide risk, and taking self-harm seriously is a vital part of safe care.